The bird may be free, but it's the dog that's most definitely running wild. Yep, as Elon Musk ascends to the throne at Twitter and starts playing with his new toy, Dogecoin is off the leash and has bolted out of the backyard. The whole crypto market has been rallying over the last few days, but Doge has left everything else in the dust. Now, you don't need to be a full-time crypto guy with a team of peerless researchers and analysts behind him, as well as excellent personal hygiene, to put two and two together to explain why Doge is pumping off the back of Elon's Twitter takeover. Even those who don't care about crypto, yes, yes, they do exist, know that Elon is dead keen on Doge and has dictated much of its price action for, well, longer than is really funny. You know, tweeting about it, accepting it as payment for Tesla merchandise, mugging off about it on primetime TV, etc., etc., etc. Thank you, Michael. Well, Call now, the Doge father. Uh, okay, Doge father. So. <laughs> Basically, Elon loves Doge and is more than happy for everyone to know about it. And now that he's installed himself as chief twit, his words, not mine, there's a lot of speculation that Twitter may integrate Doge on its platform. Hence, Doge's insane price action of late. So, is this hype justified? Will Elon live up to his whole Doge father shtick, or is the Doge community about to be very disappointed? Well. Let's look and see. Before I go on though, I do need to let you know that if you like this video and subscribe to the channel, I will do my absolute best to avoid any more dog themed puns from now on. If I get the sense there is insufficient liking and subscribing going on, however, I will unleash the hounds, so to speak. So you have been warned. Also, none of this is financial advice, so contact a financial advisor if your portfolio is under the weather, and contact air traffic control if your dog has suddenly begun hurtling towards the moon. Thanks for listening. OK, now, the story of Dogecoin is a fascinating one, and I covered it in way more detail in our dedicated Dogecoin video from last year over on our main channel. So do check it out for the deep dive on Doge and ignore how much I've aged since it was made. Regardless of your opinion of Doge, the story of its creation and subsequent success tells us a lot about the history of cryptocurrency and, you could argue, about internet culture in general. An interesting bone to uh, chew on. Sorry, like and subscribe. Anyway, arguably most relevant to Twitter's possible integration with Dogecoin is the fact that one of the crypto project's earliest intended uses was for tipping on Reddit and other such social media platforms. Now, this leads us into the realms of micropayments, that is, frequent and generally tiny transfers of value, which many have speculated could be harnessed to tackle some of Twitter's most pressing problems. As anyone who uses Twitter will probably know, the platform is plagued by bots and spam, which makes it unusable at times. Now, I'm liable to start frothing at the mouth if I talk about this too much, but why bots are able to reply to tweets is utterly beyond me. I can understand the legitimate uses for Twitter bots, such as scheduled tweeting, etc., but enabling them to spam the replies to people's tweets makes absolutely zero sense and is frankly annoying AF. Seeing the replies to your tweets filled by bots saying, why is no one talking about this, is absolutely infuriating. OK, rant over. Now, Elon is, of course, well aware of Twitter's bot problem, and it's been one of the major stumbling blocks to his taking over the company. You may recall that the deal stalled over the issue of how many bots were actually on the platform, with many speculating that Elon wanted to back out of the whole thing when he realized just how bad the bot problem was. Regardless of that, however, it's clear that the bots need to be tackled, and this is where Doge could come in. So, I mean, one fairly obvious solution would be to make running a bot too expensive to be worth bothering with. So, for instance, if it cost a small amount of Doge to send a tweet, bots and spammers would find themselves having to pay much more than the average user in order to send all their annoying misspelled rubbish, while one imagines the average user themselves wouldn't feel the financial hit that much, if at all. If it cost less than a penny to send a tweet, would that really price out anyone apart from spammers and maybe Donald Trump, if he wasn't banned, of course? 
Bots and spammers play a numbers game after all, so if the numbers go against them, well, you'd imagine they'd have no incentive to continue. And, as it happens, this course of action would resonate with some of the origins of crypto itself. A predecessor of Bitcoin was a project called Hashcash, which was designed to combat email spam. Sending an email would require a small payment of Hashcash, a bit like fixing a stamp to an actual physical letter. As with Twitter spammers, sending out tons and tons of spam emails would therefore be too costly to be worth it. Adam Back, the inventor of Hashcash, is thought by some to be Satoshi himself and, as CEO of Blockstream, is one of those crypto OGs still active in the industry today. And we'll be back with more fascinating crypto facts next time. So, there is a theoretical use case for Doge in Twitter's Elon-curated future. But, I hear you say, what about Bitcoin? After all, Twitter founder and former CEO Jack Dorsey is a Bitcoin maxi and championed the integration of BTC with Twitter's platform, resulting in the BTC tipping feature that was introduced a few months ago. So, couldn't BTC just be used as Twitter's de facto internal currency? Well, yes it could, but Doge does actually have some advantages over BTC in this regard. For one thing, Dogecoin runs a lot faster than Bitcoin. While a new Bitcoin block is produced every 10 minutes or so, a new Dogecoin block is mined every minute. As such, Doge transactions are much faster, and that's an important fact to consider if we're talking about thousands and thousands of small transactions happening, well, all the time. The fact that Doge has no maximum supply, with around 5 billion created every single year, means it's unlikely to become a long-term store of value like BTC has. Can you see all those Bitcoin hodlers opening their wallets to spend their BTC on Twitter? I'm not sure I can, and like it or loathe it, BTC is now digital gold. And as Gresham's law states, the more valuable something is perceived to be, the less likely people are to want to spend it. Meanwhile, Doge's sheer abundance means it's much more likely that people would be willing to actually spend it rather than hodl. And of course, using Doge, or indeed any other crypto for that matter, has many advantages over fiat currencies too. For one thing, Twitter would not have to set up dozens and dozens of currency-specific payment gateways across the world in order to use an internet-based currency that is freely available. Most exchanges support Doge, and it's perhaps second only to Bitcoin in terms of recognition. Most people may not know the ins and outs of it, all the more reason to watch that video I mentioned earlier, but chances are they have at least heard of it. Then there's also Doge's low sticker price, which would mean that many of those new to crypto would likely be more comfortable buying and using it than they would something like BTC. Yes, yes, it's all about market cap, but, well, they'll learn that soon enough. Meanwhile, other mooted uses for Doge have been to pay for Twitter's Premium Blue subscription service, the price of which may reportedly be hiked as part of the changes being rung by the new regime, apparently in part to move away from the ad revenue model Twitter currently relies on. So, if Elon is indeed planning to use Dogecoin in this or some other way as part of Twitter, then the recent pump we've seen in Doge's price does in fact make some sense. Doge could be primed for some actual real-world utility, but then again, it's also questionable whether a Dogecoin integration for tipping or subscriptions would actually do anything for Doge's price from a supply and demand perspective. That's because Doge isn't accepted as legal tender anywhere well, at least not yet, and that means that every time someone tips or makes a payment in Doge, it could likely be immediately sold by the counterparty for fiat, thereby cancelling out the initial demand. And of course, everything just discussed is just speculation at this stage. And speaking of speculation, that's exactly what the recent rally we've seen for Doge, and yes, all the other dog-themed meme coins, has been based on. As I mentioned in my weekly news update today as well, in the absence of any further Doge-related news from Elon & Co, it's likely that this rally will fizzle out fairly quickly. 
Doge is currently hugely overbought, and a correction is now overdue for it and the other dog-themed meme coins too. Particularly the other dog-themed meme coins, as it's doubtful whether anyone is seriously assuming Elon is going to suddenly turn around and announce a Twitter integration with Shib, Baby Doge, Floki, Kishu, Dobo, Dogs of Elon, etc., etc. Then again, this is a man who announced his takeover of Twitter by arriving at its HQ carrying a sink. So, well, maybe I'm jumping the gun. Better try and remember the contract addresses for those shitcoins for PancakeSwap, just in case.